Okay, this is going to be part one of a two-part video on my Chinese Type 56 carbine, or what is more commonly known as the SKS rifle. Uh, this is the Chinese-made version I bought way back in the late 80s. It's brand new, or was brand new. Um, <clears throat> not to be confused with the later ones, or the ones with pin barrels and, and the crap that came in towards the end of the Chinese importation. Now, I'm making this video for two reasons. Number one, the SKS rifle system, I think, is a, a rifle that has been neglected and not given the credit due for what, what it really is as compared to a lot of other fire military style firearms. Also, because I made a video for content where I took somebody's gun and I was getting paid to clean the cosmoline out of the gun and in storage for a million years and then put that hokey 30 round magazine on it. I do not condone doing that in any way, shape, or form, changing this gun from its original configuration. In other words, placing a 30 round mag, 50 round drum on this, highly impractical and, and actually to me it, it's quite a stupid idea. And I'm going to explain to you why. This weapon, as is, the way it is in its original configuration, is pretty much an impressive gun, okay, in all round guns compared to the AK-47, the AR-15, Okay, this gun kind of beats them hands down, and I'm going to tell you why I think that. First of all, let's take a look at it. Yes, this is an older design. It was the late 40s, right after World War II, the Russians designed this weapon. And then it was copied by several other of the communist satellite countries, China, one of them. Yugoslavia has something a little bit different, but this was the gun. This weapon is still used as a ceremonial gun in Russia and several other of the former Russian countries, uh, communist bloc countries. Their honor guards have chrome-plated versions of this gun. This is the ceremonial gun. When you go to the nation's capital or whatever, you will see the honor guards carrying this weapon. Now, why is this weapon great? Well, at the time, I paid $180 for this rifle, the canvas chest pouch and that, and an AK-47 made from China would cost $350 to $375. So in terms of uh, economics, this is a better deal. Also this gun will perform accuracy wise the AK-47, and I'll explain that in detail. Now, why this gun is pretty neat all by itself. Okay, for those of you that don't know, it's a 10 shot fixed box magazine semi automatic gun. The gun is gas operated, much similar to the AK 47. Your gas is tapped off here, there's a huge piston that drives back onto this bolt. This bolt is a cam lock, okay? I'd call it, I think I got it right. What happens is when it comes back, there's two pieces, nothing rotates, there's a block that locks down into the receiver, and the upper part, when the gas piston rod hits it, uncams the lower section, draws the gun back, and then it operates in semi automatic. You got a fixed stock, simple fixed wooden stock. The balance is there, it's lightweight, it's nice, okay. Now, like I said, basic open sights, notch in a post, very similar to the AK-47, okay. Very rugged, very reliable. Simple action, okay. Again, rugged, reliable. All right, we'll go into the magazine and that later. It also comes with the folding bayonet, which 
you know, depending on how you look at it. Ever since the Korean War, people have said, you know, hey, do we need a bayonet or whatever? But it's folding, it's attached to the gun, nothing to lose, it all comes as one unit. Also, in the buttstock, there is a trap door and there is a metal handle, I'm not going to show you. The cleaning kit and the cleaning rod is right up here under the barrel. So you take out that rod, you take that tube, make a handle out of it, and you have a cleaning kit all right here contained in the actual gun. You do not need any extra equipment, web gear, or anything to carry it. Bayonet cleaning equipment other than solvent and oil, which that was kept in the canvas pouch, all there. The only downside is, is this gun is all metal, blued steel, and must be cared and cleaned for, okay, or you will run into problems. Now, as for operation, like I said, if you notice, you cock that, it's ready to go. The safety is down here on the trigger guard. You flick it up, the gun is on safe. Also, when you go to fire the gun, when you go to put your finger there, in the dark or in a crisis or panic mode, you can physically tack, you know, tell that the safety is on before you shoulder the gun. Your finger goes on the safety lever, which is right there, so it's very convenient. Flicking it on, flicking it off. Outstanding. Don't need to even look at it. You can do it in the dark. Yet, you know, you can't see. So, great deal there. Now, Loading and unloading the gun. Here's the thing about it. 10 round magazine. Now, I know a lot of people, oh, 10 rounds, whatever. At the time, most standard bolt action rifles were five shots. So a 10 round magazine was kind of an advantage when this thing was developed. Now the thing about this gun is when you take, you know, your 10 round stripper clip, put it in there, Load it in, you got your 10 rounds. You send it home and it would go off, you know, be loaded. Say to unload it, you have this tab down here. You press this tab and it would open up the magazine, dump out your rounds, clear your gun, and you're unloaded. Pretty simple. Okay? So say, now, you don't have a stripper clip, all you got is a couple loose rounds. The gun can be loaded individually, okay, one cartridge at a time, then again, come back, release the bolt stop, and she goes home, all right. There is no reason why you should fool with this 10 round magazine whatsoever. It's reliable, it functions, you can load the 10 rounds in there, all right, it it's, doesn't stick out, it makes the gun handy, lightweight, and really, what, what do you need a 50 round drum for? Okay. Now, the only thing that kind of limits this is the cartridge, 7.62 by 39 probably 400 yards of stretching it with this gun, okay, where, um, so like I said, 400 yards, realistically 300 if you're going to hit something. So it is not going to replace a weapon of a heavier caliber to reach out further. Like I said, as a general purpose weapon, uh, 300 yards out, it's lightweight, compact, okay, you don't need any fancy accessories, you got your cleaning kit, what you, all you would need is just pockets in your jacket to hold ammo, and like I said, the ammo comes on stripper clips, you could either use what they had, or something that this would just hold into, you know, go. 
So now, another thing, taking this gun apart, okay? Take this thing apart. Let me back this up a little. There, spring. You know, like I told you, your two-piece bolt that cams in there. You guys should probably go see that in another video. Then you take your bullet, go over up by the rear sight. I'll zoom in on that for you. You get this little tab here, you can get the bullet in there. It's on the rear sight. And you just flip that up. And you look to where in the top here it lines up and will release your upper handguard and your gas piston here. Okay. So now you have this whole weapon open. The receiver is open. You can brush this out with a rag and a cloth and a brush. Okay, clean the bore like you clean a bore normally. Clean your chrome line gas piston. Make sure there ain't no junk or debris in there. That's how that comes out. Your bolt. Okay. Again, these pieces are large. There's no little tiny small pieces. You know, you scrub them with solvent in the brush, proper cleaning fluid. That's it. No twisting, no cotter pins, no little tiny complex parts. All of these parts are fairly good sized, so there's not, no small parts to lose out in the field. Okay? And like I said, with the receiver open like this, it's easy to clean. You can clean it just with a rag in your, your bare fingers. You don't need no tools or digging around in there or nothing. Just clean it out and you're good to go. Okay? So maintaining this gun is very simple. Okay, it's not a difficult thing to keep it clean, keep it functioning. Okay, which is something to think about. Okay, and that's where I believe, even though this is an old obsolete design, there are a lot of advantages about this rifle. Okay. I mean, you can't get much more simpler than this. You know, even with my disability, I do not have problems getting this gun apart, getting this gun back together again. Now, what I just mentioned about the disassembly, robust, simple thing, um, I've seen so many people out on a range with an AR-15 and, and the gun's constantly malfunctioning and they'll spray more, they'll open the bolt in action and spray more REM oil or something in there. They don't understand how the gun is. The gun must be maintained in AR-15 uh, to maintain it, keep it at a level of cleanliness is a lot more difficult than this and more time consuming in the small parts. Now, difference between this and the AK-47. This is a solid steel receiver with a barrel threaded in, not one of the later pressed in pinned ones, threaded in and that. So this weapon firing the same cartridge is more inherently accurate because the action is solid. It's solid steel, solid steel bolt, and a barrel. Okay. An AK-47 has in its receiver two cast steel blocks. One that mounts the stock in the back, the rear trunnion, the front trunnion, 
which the barrel is pressed into that big solid steel block. But an AK-47 receiver is only one millimeter thick and riveted together, both at the trunnions, trigger guard, and everything else. So when you fire an AK-47, the vibration, because the gun will move, the block and everything is not as rigid and solid as the SKS. Yes, you can shoot an AK-47. You can hit what you shoot at it. But I'm talking about shooting same sights benched, a brand new AK-47. Now don't be confused, some of these guns have been through the ringer and won't shoot worth a shit, okay? But, brand new guns. You tie an AK to the bench and shoot five rounds, put this on the bench, five rounds, the group will always be smaller because it is in the design of the gun. This is a tad bit more accurate than an AK-47. Not only is it more accurate, but also it's rugged too. Just as rugged as an AK-47. So that's where this one kind of trumps out the AK. If you wanted to use this for a little bit more precise shooting, you can do it with this gun. Okay, it's an edge, put it that way. It's an edge over the AK. Both the AK and the SKS have a big advantage over the AR system because the AR system is a very high maintenance system. A lot of little tiny parts in there. You have to keep that gun meticulously clean. And the more precise and tighter the barrel and action is, the more problems you will find with it. And granted, again, this beats both the AR and the AK in terms of cost. As is, to me, this is a great general purpose rifle, okay, for something that I really, you know, for defense or even in the military, you know, it's just a general rifle for guarding or something and, you know, out there to 300 yards. Okay, if you have purposes, needs, or need a larger caliber, you get a different system. But this thing, all the way around, is a pretty damn good little basic general purpose rifle. You can hunt with it, you know, and as far as military is, if you're proficient with this gun, which I was at one time. When I bought this gun when I was 29 years old, using the same ammunition which made in the 60s. When I shot offhand, I could put all 10 rounds in that diamond at 100 yards offhand when I was 29 years old. I did it and I did it more than once with this gun. Okay. Now, if I shoot offhand at the little dot, I hit down here. Okay, I was fooling around. Okay, my days of shooting offhand are over. I was shooting at this one here. In this corner, I got a bullet there and a bullet there. So that shows you how good I am at 50 yards an hour. Still, it's an accurate gun. In the configuration it is. You know, I know everybody, ooh, I want to have a... 30 round magazine. The 30 round magazines are highly impractical. They're not interchangeable. And you know, you guys know when you pull it out, you got this long hunk of metal attached to it. Okay. The gun as is, is probably one of the best military guns, you know, little lightweight rifles ever developed. As is. Compact. You know, for you survival folks, I mean, this is perfect. Okay. Yeah. That's my opinion on it. You know, cause a lot of people ask me, you know, what's your opinion? This gun versus that gun, this and that, you know. If you're proficient and if you're good, if you train and practice as a military weapon, Okay, with trained people working together as a coordinated military unit, this gun is still hard to beat. Okay, especially if you're in a remote place with no supplies or nothing, 
you need something rugged, simple, reliable, okay, this is a tough gun to, to beat in terms of reliability and usefulness and just general all-around handy little weapon. I think it's been overlooked and people try to dress it up and make it something it's not. It is not an AK-47. It is not a gun that should have a huge magazine. There's nothing wrong with the 10-round magazine. Okay, if you're proficient with this weapon, you can use it as effectively as something with a 30 or 50 round drum attached to it, which makes this an impractical device when you do that. All right, that's my spiel on part one. Uh, part two, we're going to go out, shoot some of this ammo. There was somebody else there shooting, so I didn't have that, couldn't talk much. But I did get out and shoot this, and yeah, the ammo. Even after, it says 75, it might be the Arsenal, it might be 1975 ammo. I thought it was in the 60s, but there we go. Alright guys, thanks for watching and make sure to get part two.